And there we go. Current temperatures, 39 degrees. Totally normal. In fact, anything below 80 is completely normal. Hey guys, welcome back for another video. Today, I got an important video, one that's probably gonna save you a lot of effort and certainly a little bit of money. There are tons of videos out there, frankly, fear shaming you into opening up your NVIDIA Shield Pro and changing your thermal paste. Now, there are certainly times when that is warranted. If you're in a disgustingly dirty environment, if you can write your name in the dust and grime on here, or I don't know, you've got pet hair completely clogging up your intake vent down here, or your exhaust, and you can just see, okay, yeah, it's really physically dirty. Yes, absolutely. You do need to periodically disassemble it, replace your thermal paste, because if you disassemble it, you have to replace the thermal paste. You can't reuse it once you've unstuck the parts together and clean out your fan. But if you're looking at it and it's pretty normal, maybe you've got some slowdowns and you're thinking, oh, well, all these videos are telling me I got to change my thermal pace and that'll make it faster. I absolutely guarantee you, most of you, you're just fine. I'm going to show you how you can actually check how you can just measure by looking at the temperature of your processor. And you know what? If you're in the normal range, you're good to go and your thermal paste is just fine. Thermal paste is not something that you need to be replacing every couple of years. It might be something you need to replace if it's been overheated or after several years of extreme heat cycling. All the way up, cool, all the way up, cool, all the way up, cool for years. Maybe you game on it daily for hours and you heat it up to its max. And maybe it also got a little bit dusty for years. That's the kind of environment where, yes, you do need to periodically change it because it dries out. But under normal use, there is nothing magical about the chip in here or the paste. And it is simply not something that is going to affect anything under normal circumstances. First thing you need to do if you are experiencing slowdowns is change your stock launcher. Most people, unfortunately, don't realize that the launcher, which is when you boot it up, that home screen you see, that's just an app. That's just a program like Netflix or Hulu or anything else you install. It's just an app and you can run other apps to be your home screen environment. Unfortunately, over the years, as the OS got updated and the programs got updated, it got bloated. This is a 2019 system and the, the CPU, it was designed years prior to that. So we're pushing a 10 year old little tiny system on a chip in here. It's not very powerful, but when you add more to it, it makes it drag down in performance. When you get rid of that stock program, all of the ads and all the nonsense and the streaming stuff and the extra garbage on there, it gets it a lot more streamlined and a lot faster. I'll put a link down below to a video I did years ago about how to change that launcher. Some of them are even completely free. Others, they cost a couple bucks. The other cool thing is you can make that home screen look and feel and act however you want. It's like basically your own computer again. So if you want it to look more like an Apple TV or like your desktop on your computer or a Roku or totally custom, there are launchers out there that can do that for you. That's the first thing to try. That will most likely take care of I don't know, 90% I'd bet of people's speed problems, just getting rid of the launcher. Beyond that, might be something incompatible or that got updated or there's just too much running on it. Because, you know, it's, it's a good system, but it can be overloaded, like I said. All right, so beyond that, if you know your launcher is good, if you know you're not running anything unusual on it and you still got slowdowns, the rest of this video is going to show you actually see if it's your temp. And the reason that systems, computers, devices will slow down as they get too hot is because it's saving itself from damage. Every processor has temperature sensors. In this case, it has four of them. And if it starts getting too hot for any reason, maybe the cooling flow is disrupted, the fan stopped working, or the thermal paste is too old, whatever. If it starts getting too hot, it knows it's getting too hot and it slows itself down because as it runs slower, it intuitively runs cooler. So it's just saving itself. Unfortunately, you notice 
when it runs slower. So the process to figure it out, unfortunately, is a little convoluted. It's totally free. You do need a computer, could be a laptop, could be a desktop, could be Windows, Mac, or Linux. It's very easy to do, but there are a few different steps that we have to go through. I'm going to show you everything. Don't worry about it. And it's just temporary, but we will be able to simply see the temperature of it. Now, if you are experiencing slowdowns, you will undoubtedly know what you're doing to make it slow down. Maybe it's playing a game, maybe it's streaming a 4K video, whatever. You know what you do to make it slow down. So you're just gonna do that and you're gonna run a simple command and it's gonna show you this is how hot it is at the moment. And if you're in the normal range, it's not that. You don't need to open it up. That's it. So the first thing is I need to plug this back in and get it up and running on my network. So just an example here of a custom launcher. This is my home screen, this is it. No ads, no extra garbage. Now the first thing we have to do is go into settings. If you've never done this before, go into about, and then scroll down to build. And you're gonna click seven times, and it will say, congratulations, you're a developer. If you've already done it, it'll give you this message here. Go back one menu and go all the way down and you will see developer options. This is simply unlocking this menu. Make sure that enable is ticked at the top and then scroll down about halfway and toggle network debugging. This will let us connect to it over the network from a computer. And then you should see it. Grab an IP address and a port number there. It says enabled. Then toggle on USB debugging right above it. It'll ask you to confirm, hit back on your remote. Now we can go to the computer. We're gonna come back to the shield in the middle of this just to confirm the connection, but that's all we'll be doing here at the shield. First thing we have to do is download this free Android software, the SDK platform tools. This will allow us to connect to the shield over the network. I'm gonna be using Windows, download and install whichever one is appropriate for you. In the case of Windows, it's just an unzip file. Put the folder wherever you like. I put mine in my program files directory. Just remember where you put it. Now right click on this PC, go to properties, scroll down and click on advanced system settings. Then click on environment variables. Make sure path is selected, click edit. Now mine's already in here, but what you're gonna do is click new, type ADB, and then click browse, and then go to wherever you put that folder, and then click okay. And then okay your way back out of these and close system settings. Now right click here anywhere in your folder, open in terminal, and you should see yourself in the folder wherever you put it. Now if you don't have PowerShell installed, you won't see the PS here, it won't make a difference. So now we just have to connect to the shield. We're gonna type ADB space connect, space the IP address of your shield. Now, if you're not sure what the IP address is, look in your router settings and it will show everything connected and what its address is. Just type the address and enter. Now back on the shield, you'll see this prompt. It's basically just asking if you wanna pair it. Select always allow and allow. Now back to the computer. And don't worry about it saying fail to authenticate. That was it giving you that prompt, just making sure you wanna connect. And we can make sure it's actually connected by typing ADB space devices, enter. And there we go, it's got a connection. Now all we have to do to see the temps is this command here. I will put it down in the description and enter. And there we go. Current temperatures, 39 degrees, totally normal. In fact, anything below 80 is completely normal. If you are pushing it to the max, you're running a Plex server, you're transcoding, you're streaming things, it should still be maximum in the 70s. Totally normal absolutely normal. If you're just using it to stream, just casual use, it's not probably going to go above 50. This generally runs pretty cool. So if you're not seeing 80 and above, you're not throttling. And by the way, it doesn't even start to throttle at 80. 80 just tells you, yeah, it's probably dirty. So if you're not seeing 80 and above, heat is not your issue and it is not the cause of any of your slowdown. And that's it. That is as simple as it gets. Now, what I suggest you do is if you're getting slowdowns, do whatever is causing it and then just check your temps. Give it about 10 minutes of running, you know, stream something 4K, 
fire up the Plex server, whatever it is you're doing, give it time to sit up there and heat up. And then check your temp. Hope it helps. See you next time.